less cheating. No. It's time to take a wild ride back to the past. Sit back and relax and enjoy this episode of Memory Lane. Hello, Gaming Pusa fans. That table can only mean one thing. That table can only mean one thing. Something crazy is going to happen. Let's see what we got here. You can't get any crazier than this. Oh my god, what the hell is that? Hey, game.com. Hey, Tiger Electronic Game.com. Look at this thing. Is it really that big? Holy crap, look how big that is. This is the box right here. Look at this. I've actually had this over at my shelf for quite a long time. I played it a couple of times. Picked it up at, I picked it up at a Goodwill quite a long time ago for like maybe five dollars, something like that. And check out the box. It's still in the box. Look at this. Game.com. So it's one of those obscure handheld consoles, and it's actually uh, pretty interesting. You see, back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s, if you were a kid growing up around that time, you probably remember the cheap, battery-operated Tiger Electronic handhelds. I think 75% of kids back then played with those because their parents were on a budget and they couldn't afford a Game Boy. They couldn't afford the Atari Lynx or the Game Gear. So we got the cheap Tiger Electronic handhelds. But the uh, liquid crystal display. Well, towards the late 90s, Tiger decided to come out with their own cartridge-based handheld. Look at this. This is a freaking beast. How could you go wrong? I mean, let's take a look at it. Let's open up the box. Let's see what we got in here. Does the box open up like this? Or... I guess it opens up from the bottom here. Let's see if we can turn it around. Well, I guess it opens up from this side. Kind of weird. And check that out. Right in the box, you have a huge... Legit, it's legitimately that big, handheld. I've got a copy of Resident Evil 2 in here. Probably check that out. Look at that. Look at the cartridges. Look. Let's see if we can do a comparison. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go grab something real quick. While I go grab that something, let's take a chance to look at that cool-looking Game.com molding box right there. You see the Game.com fits perfectly right there in the box with the cartridge. Right there to the right of it. Got the Resident Evil 2 cartridge right there. The game.com. Got the little pen. Um, I mean, check that out. Alright, so we're going to do a little comparison here. Just got to see if we can get the uh, Game Boy out of here. Oh my god, what the hell is that? Okay, so do a little cartridge comparison. Just so you can see how small the game.com. Com cartridges are. I mean, look at this compared to a Game Boy cartridge. Look at that. It dwarfs. Look how small that is. Look at that. That is insane. And the cartridge is actually not even taking up the whole plastic holder right here. It's only a portion of it right there. Look at that. Unlike the Game Boy, you can see it goes straight across. Right here, you only get a portion. That's interesting. Now let's do another comparison here. We're not over with yet. Comparisons. I got a surprise right here. Let's see what we got. So here's a comparison with Game Gear cartridges. Look at that. It looks like a baby Game Gear cartridge. Oh my god, look at that. Look at the size difference. What a freaking beast. Look at the Game Gear cartridge. Oh my god. And kill somebody with that. And next, we're going to do a, uh, a comparison with the actual uh, console itself, the handheld. Let's see if we can get this out. Alright, so is it bigger than the Game Gear? Let's find out. I mean, this is the Game Gear right here. This is a little tough comparison. These things are both gigantic. Does Game Gear fit in there? No, not really. 
So it looks like the uh, the game that com is a touch touch smaller than the game here. A little bit. It's almost the same size, but there's like a little sliver more on the Game Gear. The Game Gear has a little bit more meat on the backside right there. Now, if we're, if we're comparing it to a, like a Game Boy Color, I mean, look at this. Let's turn this sideways here. There is a massive size difference, oh my god. But, you can tell right away you're getting a bigger screen right here, so that kind of pays off. You look at this. Just look at that. That is insane. And this is not color. That would have been awesome if it was, but... However... If you look at this right here, this is technically the first portable gaming handheld that's touchscreen before the DS came out, so there is a few bonuses here, and you can have two cartridges at once in here, so let's see what we got in here. We got Jurassic Park, and what do we got here? What is this? And it lights out. You see right there, there's two cartridge slots. It's the only handheld that has that, as far as I know. Yeah, the, look, you got the little uh, headphone jack there on the bottom. It's an imp impressive design right here. It's actually, uh, it's actually not that uncomfortable to hold either. It's actually pretty nice. This appears to be some sort of CMOS battery right here, which probably hasn't been changed in forever. And right here, you do have some sort of something. I think that's probably like for a phone jack. You, back then, you can actually connect this to the internet. Let me see, it actually says it's a COM port. That's what that says right there. I don't know if this will ever focus out. Come on, macro mode. Okay, I guess that does not want to work. But that does say COM port, so that's definitely for some sort of dial up modem. And I kind of wish I didn't take that out, but now I can't get it in there. Okay, there we go. Alright, so this is where the batteries go over here. It takes four double AA batteries, which is, uh, that's quite a bit. So, we're gonna see if we can load that up with batteries. See if it works. Uh. So we got some batteries right here. Just gonna pop those batteries in there. Let's see what happens in a second. These are the pretty good batteries too. They're lithium, ultimate lithium. So yeah, well that shouldn't be eating these anytime soon. Hopefully not. Oh my God! What the hell is that? Data found. Okay, there appears to be something going on with this thing. <laughs> Does it not work anymore? What the hell? Okay. Let's see if we can start it over. I held down the power button. Well, it looks like the screen is a little, uh, have better days, I guess? I don't know. I mean, this used to work. I remember playing with it a long time ago, but I kind of still see it. Let me check that out. That's pretty weird. The screen's actually having some lines through it. Maybe it got worn out for sitting around too long. So, over right here we have a... A phone book. You can actually enter in uh, information here. If you want to save 
some phone numbers and walk over to a pay phone and dial that up. Uh, let's see, how do we go back? Just exit little button right there. Uh, yes. That's a shame that the screen's messed up. Oh my god. What a shame. Looks like we're here, we have a calendar. And we have a bit of a calendar right here. And check that out. What year is it? According to this, it's 1997. <laughs> oh my, my god, look at that. So, I mean, technically 1997, that means we still have uh, some Sega Saturn games still coming out. We have uh, probably the Atari Jaguar is being discounted. The uh, Virtual Boy probably, probably just got discounted. I don't know. PlayStation is still around. Nintendo 64 is taking off, all that stuff. You got Game Boy Color right around the corner. You got a free game right here, like Solitary. So, uh, yeah, this is interesting. It's kind of hard to see, though. The screen's actually good, the display is good, it's just what's hard to see is with the lines. Somehow, this game.com got messed up. I don't know how, but maybe it fell. So you can see there, you can take the cards off. Yeah, that's how you play Styles here. <laughs> On the game.com. And uh, yeah, you have a calculator right here. Now, the whole time I went to school, I remember uh, kids having Game Boys and a few Game Gears here and there. I knew only one kid that actually had a Game.com, and during a lunch break, he handed it over to me, and I played Duke Nukem on it, and I was very impressed. Even though it was bad. It actually impressed me quite a bit. So I can do a little calculation here. And yeah, that's supposed to be some numbers up there. Unfortunately, yeah, the screen took a beating. That is unfortunate. Alright, so uh, yeah. When you insert two cartridges, you click on here, you have a choice. You can either play either or right here. So let's say Jurassic Park. You can see the little cartridge animation right there. It's going to pop in. And uh, there we have Jurassic Park. And you hear the little music right there. Have a little animated introduction. Looks like there was a. What the hell was that? Oh, yeah, that's the camera right there. You can kind of see the reflection on the camera. I'm click on start. You have to choose either that or that. You got two different people here. It looks like a Harding or Tembo, as far as I can see. Uh, let's see if we can choose something here. Area 1. Oh, uh, it appears that we're going to be doing some driving of some sort. Is there a, an adjustment on the screen? Let me see here. Yes, the screen does have an adjustment. So let's do the Humvee. We're going to area one. And I have no idea what the hell we're doing here. What the hell is that? Oh my god. I almost got ran off the road by whatever that thing was. Holy crap. Oh my god. Let's see, turn the sound up a little bit more here. So it's kind of like a fancy Tiger Electronic Handle game, which, and uh, your typical game that you would actually see. And I guess I lost. I'm not sure what happened there. Wait, is that a, is that a motorcycle? 
Why yes it is. Let's choose a motorcycle. Let's see if we can get ran over by a This is absolutely hard to see. Oh my god. <laughs> Got dinosaurs coming out of old what the hell? Oh my god, what the hell is that? This is like road rash with dinosaurs. I mean how how, how can you go wrong with that? That's actually pretty awesome. Oh my god. So yeah, that's the uh the game.com. Hey, look at that. It has the little uh Sega Saturn logo right there. So you can tell who they're trying to feed off of. And in fact they had plenty of Sega games, so I mean, look at this. They had Fighter Mega Mix. This is the actual box to it. They actually had box games. And pretty sure this is pretty poor. I mean, at first glance, this looks bootleg. Look at that. It just looks like a horrible knockoff rendition of, you know, your typical Saturn games right here. But for what it's worth, I guess, you know, it's actually a pretty interesting handheld. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be taking a look at more Game.com games in the future. You know, hopefully we can get the screen working on this thing. Let me look at that. If you enjoyed this episode of Memory Lane, don't forget to give a thumbs up and comment down below. And, uh, yeah, Game.com. How you like that?